Welcome to the Two Random Podcast. Two Random Podcast. Tired of subscribing to a hundred different podcasts? Yeah. Sir Express and I speak motivate, eliminate boredom while giving you their commentary on breaking news, movies, music, and so much more. Going down, man. Subscribe today and rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts now. I always follow them. I always follow them. Random is the only solution. Two Random Podcast starts in three, two, one. Hey. How you doing? This is Sir Express. And I'm I Speak Motivate. And we're just talking about how crazy this offseason preseason is. So we just have a little article from Sports Illustrated for you. It says Giants Cameron Moore suspended after being charged with aggravated assault. New York Giants safety Cameron Moore has been charged with third degree aggravated assault to for punching a woman and knocking her unconscious after stepping on her neck in j advanced media reported on monday according to court documents obtained by the outlet moore was arrested over the weekend as a result of a domestic violence incident that occurred thursday night outside of his home in linden new jersey Moore was accused of placing his foot on the unidentified woman's neck and applying pressure. When the woman stood up and began yelling at him, Moore allegedly punched her in the face, causing her to lose consciousness. Moore and the 22-year-old woman met in January and have and had a dating per the affidavit. The woman was taken to the hospital with bruising, swelling, abrasions, and police were not called to the scene, but the woman filed a report Saturday at the police station in Linden. The Giants responded to the news by suspending Moore. New York Giants safety Cameron Moore was arrested over the weekend in Linden, New Jersey, For the alleged domestic violence-related incidents, team announced Moore has been suspended by the team pending further investigation. Moore was drafted by the Saints in the sixth round of the 2018 draft before he joined the Giants last year. He played two games as a rookie, and was competing for a roster spot before his suspension. Under the NFL's 2016 domestic violence policy, players involved in domestic violence incidents are subject to a six-game suspension for the first offense. Any subsequent offense are supposed to be result in a lifetime ban from the league. Mm. So, so we just want to open up the floor to you guys. This right here, if true, because I don't put anybody guilty, I don't put anybody as innocent. If true, it's this is horrific. It's horrible. It's if true, this man literally has messed up his whole entire life and then it's the thing where with a young lady is concerned why in the midst of a woman on woman fight do you feel the need to jump in to me if she came on your property you're like oh my gosh this is getting on my nerves she's making me angry call 911 exactly first off because you want to make sure everything is as safe as possible the police are trained to do and you know to evacuate people in a certain way and to detain people second the reason why i would have called the police if i was an nfl player because of stuff like this i don't want people to be saying that i restrained them in a certain way i did certain things i would call the police If someone, if the two women were fighting on my residence and it was just getting out of hand, I would call the police, not only to make sure they were safe, to make sure my reputation's intact. And that's just me personally thinking in a longevity thing. I'm calling 911. Y'all can have that. 
because I'm not having no parts. And then not only that, but, you know, it's just a thing of not only do you have to protect your reputation, but you have to protect the reputation of the league Mm. and also your, your, you know, team. Exactly. And so when you are being, you know, said that you doing things like this, if true, you just messed up your career. At the very least, you're going to get six six game suspension, and that's if Roger Goodell wants to be nice. And this is a situation with that as well. Like you were saying, it does really affect the team. Because think about it. Now everybody, the coach in the locker room, like y'all, everybody, they're already hard on you because the season coming up. Now is everybody on the team? They're gonna be giving them a talk like, "Don't do nothing stupid, or we gonna fire y'all because we don't have time to have this PR nightmare out here, having us look like fools and have negative press on us before we even play the game." Because at the end of the day, the NFL is a business. Period. It is a business. People keep on forgetting about that. It is. So when you even have the appearance of evil, of wrongdoing, they're like, look, we're looking at these numbers. Like, we love you, bro. You're a teammate, what have you. But at the end of the day, it comes down, it comes down to the numbers. Exactly. And it's a thing where, you know, unlike other situations, there are actually witnesses in this situation that could come forward. And if they decide to speak in her behalf, then you're kind of stuck out of luck because there was another woman there. The one that she was fighting. I don't know if she's going to speak out, but if she does. And then if there was other people, now, I want to know who the other woman was. Was that your sister that you felt like you had to defend her? Was that another young lady you was dealing with? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. It, at the end of the day, no matter what, your sister could have handled herself. Or if you had to, call your mama. Call, call your mom. Somebody. Exactly. Call, to de-escalate another, another woman you know, exactly. to come in and mediate the situation. If you didn't want to call the police, you didn't want nothing on either of their records, the best thing to do, call a woman over there to kind of deal with it. Or if you had security being a football player... You know, get security to be like, okay, look, ma'am, we're going to have to separate you guys. Just like a love and hip hop thing. Get them separated for a bit. Let them cool off. Me as a, if I were a man in the NFL, I would go into my quarters, into my house and let them, they can fight outside if they want to. I am not being a part of that. That is not a part of my brand because to me, players are entrepreneurs if you think about it, they're delivering their service and you're you are messing up your marketability when you have these scams and things on your record and the situation is when it comes with the young ladies that's something that's traumatic when you're hit by someone that's a very traumatic thing and then to be knocked out conscious that's just unacceptable if true this guy has to be cut and he needs to go into therapy. Yes, yes. He now, has to go into and, therapy. And this is if it's true. Uh, if it's true. We don't know if it's true. There no, still don't. has not been anything but charges. Charges don't mean anything because charges just means, okay, well, this person said this, so we have to charge you with this. But if not true, then we'll drop the charges. You know what I'm saying? Though it's always the allegations. You know, though it's following your name, it's still not something that you actually did. So I feel bad if this is not true and she's lying on him, Uh, because there is certain things like, why did you wait from Thursday to Saturday to let the police know? You should have let him know right then and there when you woke up and found out that this man hit you. Unless she was in fear, then she finally got the confidence, you know, to do it. So it's like two different ways where this could have flown. We weren't there, so we don't know. Unfortunately, in these situations, 
we don't have like video evidence and things exactly. and you don't have um the background story because even video uh video video's clear um except for it, it it really does depend on when you do shoot the video exactly. because a lot of times we don't see um any aggression or anything like you know how you fight as kids and then there's a the person that threw the second punch gets um is the one that gets caught call. however in this case because it's a woman and a man he shouldn't hit her at all regardless it only is- restrain her from Hitting him. Hitting him. Exactly. If a woman is doing that, restrain, restrain, restrain her. Hold her arms down. You know, a safe way and call the police. Exactly. Call Even- the police. These football... I, I, I gotta be honest. These football players have to start... I don't know who their PR people are, but they just need to... um have a class as far as just how to live their daily life because I just feel like all the shenanigans that's going on they're not it's just not going well yeah at the end of the day was it right for her to put her hands on him no but at the end of the day no way, shape, or form are you to put your hands on a woman. I don't care if she smacked you, hit you hard. You know, I understand people, you know, they, they black out. Black out. It, get it's triggered. something that, you know, something triggers you. You might not even remember putting your hands on this person, but you did. And though you blacked out, it's still not right. You know, it, at the very least, you should apologize try to get help figure out why certain things trigger you right because i I feel like mental health is so undiagnosed and and is not treated and not acknowledged that people they come it could be in their little normal lives where it's starting to affect them more than ever now right and unfortunately the biggest place where people are not you know, really, you know, putting forth the effort to know about, you know, mental illnesses or anything, unfortunately, is the black community, male. Because I can't even say that because I've seen a lot of black women starting to go figure out things about mental health. But it seems like a lot of black men are kind of you know hard-headed when it comes to that now i'm not saying black men are hard-headed or don't want to you know learn about mental health but it just seems like that from the big name people are not really going to get help except for Charlemagne, he's really trying to you know advocate for that he created a book right and i am so thankful for people like him who are trying to help uh and i wish people like R. Kelly, you know, with what is going on with him, you know, at the end of the day, go get help. And I feel like he need Cameron needs help as well. Yes, if true, he does need help. Even if not true, we also, we always can uh, benefit from therapy. I think people just automatically think therapy means you're crazy. Exactly. And it does not. It just means, oh, you may have a little quirks that you may have to get under control. That's an underlining symptom of a mental illness or just something that we have to work on. Mm -hmm. So we just want to talk to you guys and ask you guys the question. Do you feel as if he is guilty? And is a suspension enough? We love you guys. We thank you for joining us once again. Keep giving us those fives all day on Apple Podcasts. Thank you, guys. We love you. We love you.